Chikemi, my name is Sarah Lamore and welcome to this Finance and Freedom channel. These days, there is no shortage of people giving financial information about what you should and shouldn't do with your finances and money and how to grow it and become financially free. We see so much information everywhere and oftentimes it's quite contradictory. For every piece of advice that you hear, there's often the opposite piece of advice given, so it can become confusing as well. In this video, I'm sharing the financial information or advice that I most disagree with or the stuff that just simply has not worked for me. Hello and welcome. If you are brand new to this channel, we would love to have you here. So please make sure you subscribe. We put out videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Also, if you find value from these videos, it would be amazing if you could like the video as well to help us get the message of finance and freedom out to the world. Secondly, we have a banging newsletter that I think you will love filled with beautiful short stories that are teaching you all at the same time. Leon is an exceptional writer and he will fill your inbox with magic. So you can check that out, link in the bio. And finally, we have recently launched the pre-sale of our course membership combo on all things finance and freedom. So if you want to master this world even more, there is a link in the bio to sign up for lifetime access at a huge discount. Just like everything in life, I don't believe that there is one specific solution or one way of getting to your goal. I think oftentimes you'll find different ways of getting to your goals. And that's why we probably see so much online information about finances and financial education, information advice about finances and money, because ultimately the person that is teaching the information is just coming from their own experience. So they may say certain things and be like, yes, this worked because it worked for them. It doesn't mean that it's true. It just means that it worked for them. Same with me. Whenever I provide any information about what has worked for me, it's because it's worked for me. <laughs> I'm not going to promote anything that has not worked for me. But I do see things online that are just, I, I'm so disagreeing with them. I just cannot overlook them. And it annoys me oftentimes when I hear these things. And essentially what I'm saying is that I know everything. I have all the right answers. <laughs> just kidding. No, not at all. I just don't agree with these things based on my own experiences or my point of view. So I'm going to list them down below. Let me know what you think. If you agree with them or you disagree with them, I would love to know your opinion as well. So let's get into it. Number one, you need to be stingy with your food spending. It is very upsetting to me when I see all of these big financial channels talking about how little they spend on their food or how proud they are of their food budgets every week. And it is a minuscule amount that they spend every single week on food. These people have a lot of wealth. And even if they became more and more and more and more wealthy, for example, Graham, Stefan, and Jajik, they have so much money and they continue sharing what they eat. And it's still the same idea. It is still very sad. And Jajik once mentioned in a video, which was really upsetting to me. And I even commented underneath that. He was saying that organic food is a joke. And these two comedians showed that it wasn't true. That was a clip from like 10 years ago where people were ridiculing organic food because it's not important. Organic food is extremely important. There are so many studies that show that it is extremely important. I mean, comment sense also think about how much pesticides and fertilizers and poisons are being put onto your food do you think that that's not important and to believe that comedians have uncovered the truth 10 years ago about you know how false organic food is and ridicule it and therefore you don't have to care about what you put into your own body that just is ridiculous to me now this is upsetting to me for a number of reasons number one your body's a temple you want to look after yourself it is so important to be your optimal if you are not optimal how are you going to perform your best in business even if you don't have the most amount of money right now you still should be prioritizing your health because if you have your health in check you are able to perform better it therefore means that you can work less hours but more productively so much of your output is based on how well you can perform. You don't feed athletes McDonald's all the time and expect them to perform their best. If you're in business, this is hard work. Like you really want to be putting the best fuel into your own body as well. This is why it's upsetting to me because these channels have such a big reach to a lot of younger people that are aspiring to be like them. And so they think that it's not important to put the right food in your body. So that's number one. Secondly, they're spreading misinformation <laughs> because organic food is important. Don't use crappy sources to reinforce your idea. Thirdly, if you have some wealth behind you, like these general now do it is almost your duty to take care of your health so that you are not a financial strain on the system. Now, these guys are young, but at some point they're not going to be young anymore. And if their health is not in check and they don't put the right habits in place right now in order to ensure that they are as healthy as possible in the future, they're going to be a burden on the financial system and they have enough money to ensure that they're not like that. Also, if you have all this wealth, but you don't have the health, you are not going to enjoy your money. Now, of course, Graham, Andre, they are hyper successful dudes. Lots of people love them. Lots of people respect them. Well done to them for all the efforts that they put in. Guys, well, well done. However, 
you have a platform <laughs> and you have to be very careful about what you put out there. And if you're encouraging people to skimp out on their food and then putting a strain on the their people's bodies, it's, it's just not cool in my opinion. Now, I'm absolutely not saying that you should spend all the money in the world on your health and the food that you eat, because I know that's unrealistic for so many people. Lots of people cannot afford a lot of great food. However, you have to do your absolute best and there's lots of different ways that this is possible. There are ways and you obviously have to work within your budget. So no, I don't believe in the slightest that you have to skimp out on food. I definitely did not do that for myself. When I didn't have money, I also went to the local veggie markets. There was a period of time just before the markets closed on a Sunday. They were closing for three days, so I'd go very last minute Sunday, and then they would have huge discounts on the veggies that were available there, so I would stock up. And I honestly think by prioritizing my health, I was able to advance better in everything because I had clarity of mind. Right now, I'm really struggling <laughs> with no clarity of mind because I am sick to have a nice fluid train of thought. So if I was operating at my subpar to try to create a multi-million dollar business the way that I have, you better believe that it would not have worked. Number two, you need to work ridiculous hours to succeed. I just did a video on the dangers of the hustle culture, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this right now, but you can check that out, link in bio or up on the screen. We have definitely been pushed this idea of the hustle culture over the last few years of how important it is. If you wanna succeed, you just have to hustle and grind, work 24 seven. And in the last video, there was a few people that commented like, hey, don't you think that the hustle life was what got you to where you are right now? And it is helpful, right? I have said this before. I think there are moments in life where you absolutely have to hustle and grind and have spring I talk about life in a series of sprints. It's like sprint, get that goal that you really want and then make sure that you relax and rejuvenate and bring yourself back to balance. Otherwise you are gonna burn yourself out real quick. Jordan Peterson has talked about the price of being exceptional and to be exceptional in one area of life, let's say if you wanna be an athlete or a CEO of a trillion dollar company, for example, everything else is going to have to give. But at some point you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Do you wanna be at the level where there's only one thing in your life that matters and everything else is like really? subpar because you cannot have your whole life fully in balance unless you are willing to make sacrifices in some areas. So for me, yeah, I have a multi-million dollar business and this one is now building up as well. How much further am I willing to go? Do I want to keep hustling? But yes, I absolutely had to have sprints in my time. But also, now I'm starting to learn that I don't know if that was necessary. It may have been because I was brought up into the whole hustle culture and I thought that's how I had to operate. But now you see a lot of people being like, wait, that doesn't sound like I really need to do that. Do I actually have to stay up till 2 a.m. in order to make something happen? Like, I don't know about that. I think sleep quality is actually more important. And there's studies that are showing productivity. If you only work four days a week instead of five days, sometimes you're more productive than working five days a week. So I honestly don't know if I would have to do it all over again, if I would go such a crazy hustle culture or if I would learn to work smarter instead. And I'm excited to hopefully explore this territory to see if I can be you know, a role model in this new way of doing business where you don't have to hustle as hard and not hustling as hard is working smart. So for example, read the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. I am under no lie or impression to believe that he actually only worked four hours a week when he was writing this book and he works hard. The man works really hard, but I mean a 20 hour work week, 30 hour work week, like normal hours, I still think it's possible to build a huge successful business and succeed in life if you don't hustle. So we're excited for this new chapter of life and the world to show people that you don't have to hustle in order to succeed the way that we used to think that we had to do it. Number three, that buying a house is always an asset. I'm gonna say that this is probably one of the most common financial pieces of advice or information that I've seen. People saying that your house is an asset. Robert Kiyosaki, writer of Rich Dad Poor Dad, often says that a house is not an asset unless it is sold, it is a liability. And I have to agree with this. I was always under the idea that I was going to have my very first house to be an investment property instead of a house that I was gonna live in. It turned out to be different, but I was able to buy my house outright, which was really, really nice. Now, of course, I know, I know, I know, not everybody is in the opportunity to buy the house outright. I know, I know, I know, I know. But I'm just pointing it out that I think it is a liability because the expense of having a house that you love, that you wanna make beautiful is so expensive. <laughs> I have a friend that also just bought a house and you know, a big mortgage. It's such a fancy house. The mortgage is 40 years. He's a really, really young kid and he just keeps adding more and more things to his house and more expensive 
do dads as rich dad calls it and you just keep adding things because you're like ah oh, $40 mortgage you know I'm just repaying it once a month or whatever it's so easy no big deal you don't own the house it's not your house you're buying a house that's so far of reach that you're gonna pay 40 years you're essentially leasing a house yes of course you're gonna end up buying the house in the end after 40 years but you're paying double or triple of the price value because of interest so you might as well in my opinion this is what I was always gonna do was to end up with a property that was going to be an investment property first and foremost or I've also heard people do this beautiful strategy which is to buy a duplex and they live in one side and the other side ends up paying for the mortgage of the full property which I think is a beautiful method in order to have somebody else paying for your mortgage this is a brilliant strategy if you want to have best of both worlds but buying a property your first house that is far too expensive that's going to put you in debt that far you're not going to know what it feels like to be financially free you're always going to have this giant burden but because we're brought up in this world that debt is normal and that everybody should just have debt and this just part of life everybody just assumes that that's normal but your, your brain will never be truly free because you've got this huge rock sinking you down my house I will say I mean it was like 250,000 US outright and it's a beautiful house with that I've also I think spent maybe 50 to 60 thousand dollars already because I was like of course I need a greenhouse and a fireplace and you know I need paint and we need to renovate the kitchen and the bathroom and we're gonna add this and this and this and this and the furniture because you know I have a nice house and it's big so I better add some furniture and I couldn't believe it when I finally caught myself I was like what the hell oh sauna as well <laughs> why it was such an affordable house up front right 250,000 for a house is not the biggest most disastrous thing it's still not the cheapest but it's you know I definitely could afford it, but I ended up just like adding, 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 adding because it's your house, you wanna make it beautiful. <laughs> so this is why I think it is a liability, absolutely first and foremost, rather than an asset. Number four, the only way to invest in property is with debt. Now I own five houses out, right? So you guys should just do it too, the end. <laughs> I know it's completely outrageous for me to even consider that this is a strategy possible for a lot of people and a lot of people use debt as I mentioned debt is such a common thing that we have these days that everybody just buys 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 something so out of reach on their credit cards or mortgages and they are just leasing a luxury lifestyle that isn't reflective of their actual financial situation you want to become debt free as soon as possible this is something that you should be striving so strongly for to become debt free this is one thing that I really appreciate Dave Ramsey talking about is to get out of debt as far as possible we hear a lot of financial experts talking about using debt to buy property is of course that's just a common thing put yourself in debt I'm in two minds of this because someone that I'm interested by their strategy property investor he has about 300 properties I think and he uses just debt in order to acquire this he thinks it's amazing but the reason why I say it's not really good to do this two reasons one lots of people do not know how to handle debt properly so he has lots of experience his number one goal is to become filthy rich that is his aim that's what he wants to do so he uses debt very strategically and he was not going to be pulled by shiny things he used to have a Bentley because he wanted to try that lavish lifestyle he downgraded to a really crappy car actually he doesn't care because his aim is to be filthy rich so he's not pulled by you know other aspects of how you can use debt he uses it for a business strategy whereas most people they cannot control themselves unfortunately because it's just too easy to let yourself go when you have the capacity to get access to debt the second reason I'm saying this isn't the best strategy is because something in my opinion it's just my opinion I feel like something's coming on the horizon we printed so much money last year trillions of dollars were being printed we have never been in debt as much as a world ever something is coming so has if you have that much debt and it's not being paid off it's not checked you don't own anything like what would happen if everything collapses it's like I need the money back right now or there's hyperinflation and you don't own anything like this is why I'm saying debt is not good and it needs to be paid back as soon as possible because you just don't know you're trusting that the banks will take care of you and that's freaking crazy but this is why I'm saying get out of debt as fast as you can or if you're on the market just to buy a place right now buy below your means whatever the bank says that they will lend out to you just have that I've been there I've seen the lavish lifestyles that people have lived and oftentimes they always want to downgrade in the end uh Graham hi me again your house is huge it's so big like why it's so unnecessary it's really unnecessary I mean if it makes you happy but the cleaning costs the furnishing costs the electricity and power costs the recurring monthly bills that you're gonna have on that house oh my god I just I don't believe in the bigger is better lifestyle anymore I really don't even my house it's a four bedroom we use only 
to two offices and one bedroom. We leave one vacant. It's so big, we don't know what to do with it. So we wanna downgrade in the near future because it's just, the maintenance is just absolutely insane. The house owns you, you don't own the house. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed my little input into the financial information or advice that I don't agree with. Obviously, I'm just some chick. I'm not a financial advisor. I just share financial information that's worked for me. I just like to have my strategy more taken care of on the inside because what's more important for me is like security. Yes, I still splurge. Yes, I still, you know, take care of my health, <laughs> even though right now, maybe not so good, but <laughs> that's out of my control. And on your deathbed, you're not gonna remember the things you have, but the experiences you had. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you like as well and subscribe. Also, we have that banging newsletter. Check it out. I think you will love it. And of course, there is the pre-sale of our course membership combo on all things finance and freedom. If you want to get a lifetime access for a discounted price, you can do so by checking out the link in the bio. And I will see you in the next one.